Welcome to the Harris County Flood Control District's virtual community engagement meeting to discuss the Mercer Stormwater Detention Basin. This virtual community meeting is being offered by the Flood Control District to share vital information with the community. My name is Imelda Vera with the Flood Control District Communications Team, and I am joined tonight by a team of Flood Control District leadership and subject matter experts to ensure we continue to keep you up to date on this important flood mitigation projects in your community. We're also joined by staff from area elected officials offices and community associations. We're glad to see the community so engaged in these projects and we look forward to continuing to share updates and keeping you all in the community involved. First, we would like to begin tonight's meeting with the remarks from Harris County Precinct 1 Commissioner Ellis. Hi, I'm Rodney Ellis. On behalf of Harris County Precinct 1 and the Flood Control District, welcome to this informative meeting about significant flood control projects in your area. As always, we have you in mind when we design projects to mitigate flooding to protect your homes and businesses. We wanna be transparent with all projects because we cannot do it without your participation. Every community, regardless of the zip code, deserves increased protection from flooding. That's why equity is our guiding principle in assigning our infrastructure investments. In addition, we are prioritizing communities that are most vulnerable to flooding and have historically taken the longest to recover. Let me thank flood control officials for developing this and other projects across Harris County. Most importantly, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to participate in this community meeting tonight. We know you could have been somewhere else doing something else, but we're glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ellis. We appreciate you joining us tonight for this meeting. This virtual public meeting will begin with a presentation to share project updates, included an overview of Mercer Stormwater Detention Basin, the project timeline, and next steps. The presentation will be followed by a virtual question and answer session with flood control district team members. Attendees will be able to submit comments and questions through the website or by phone. Any comments not addressed during the Q&A session will receive a response from the Flood Control District after the close of the comment period. Instructions on how to participate in the virtual meeting are included on this slide, on this virtual meeting webpage, and the Flood Control District website. I will also share a reminder of these instructions when we reach the Q&A portion of the meeting. We will now transition to Duana Green, Capital Project Division's North Manager with the Flood Control District, who will share information about the Flood Control District and this project. Duana, over to you. I'm sorry, Duana, can you start over and on mute, please? Okay. Let me start again. Thanks, Imelda, and thank, a special thanks to each of you for joining us tonight. In this presentation, we will give a brief overview of this project. But before we get to the project specifics, we want to share some information about the Flood Control District. The Harris County Flood Control District is a special purpose district created by the Texas legislature in 1937 in response to devastating floods that hit the Houston area in 1929 and in 1935. The Flood Control District is governed by the Harris County Commissioner's Court and works closely with other entities in our region, such as the Harris County Engineering Department and the City of Houston. The organization was created in part to serve as a local partner to leverage federal funding for flood damage reduction projects. Our mission has expanded since our founding, leading to billions of dollars in federal, state, and locally funded infrastructure improvements in the ground. The mission of the Harris County Flood Control District is to provide flood damage reduction projects that work with appropriate regard for community and natural values. One of the most difficult challenges we face is constructing effective projects that are sensitive to community and to natural values in a highly urbanized area. Harris County includes 
23 main watersheds, totaling approximately 1,800 square miles and more than 2,500 linear miles of channel. Now, 2,500 miles is approximately the distance from New York to California. A watershed is a geographical region of land that drains to a common channel or outlet. Each watershed has its own unique characteristics and needs. The project we are presenting tonight is in the Cypress Creek watershed located in Northwest Harris County. Our area is flood prone. Here are some reasons why. Extreme rainfall, including tropical storms and hurricanes, flat, slow draining land, clay soils that do not soak up excess rainfall quickly. While the Flood Control District plays a critical role in flood risk reduction, we are one of several entities involved in these efforts in our region. When rain falls on your roof, it flows through several jurisdictions, such as streets and drains managed by the Harris County Engineering Department, a municipal utility district, or a city such as the city of Houston before it flows into a larger channel, creek, or bayou that the Flood Control District owns and maintains. This slide illustrates the various jurisdictions, which sometimes we even share with other entities. Inside neighborhoods, as shown on the left side of the il illustration, storm sewers and roadside ditches collect stormwater runoff and start the process of moving it away from streets and homes. Storm sewers and roadside ditches are the responsibility of the underlying municipality. The larger bayous and channels that take the collected stormwater and move it through our drainage system to Galveston Bay are the responsibility of the flood control district. This is shown on the right side of the illustration. In the middle is a stormwater detention basin, sometimes constructed by flood control district. When storm sewers on the left are increased, this creates an increase in runoff since it is our policy to avoid any adverse impacts from our projects, detention basins help to safely take in and temporarily store excess stormwater during heavy rain events. Often we partner with Harris County precincts, utility districts, and others to add recreational amenities such, such as trails to these basins and along our channels. On August 25th, 2018, Harris County voters approved $2.5 billion in bonds for flood risk reduction projects. This vote followed a series of meetings across Harris County in each watershed, which resulted in a list of what is now 181 bond projects. As of August 25th, 2021, every project included in the 2018 bond program has been initiated, including 12 projects in the Cypress Creek watershed. A total of more than $1.35 billion in partnership funding has been secured so far to stretch the 2018 bond program even farther. The actual timing of each individual project will depend on a variety of factors, including environmental permitting, right-of-way acquisition, and utility relocation in some cases, requirements of a particular grant also. That said, project lists and projected schedules are updated regularly on our website. While the bond was $2.5 billion, the full cost of every project in the bond tables is almost $5 billion. So we made it clear from the outset that we would need funding partners to fully construct the projects in the bond program. As I mentioned, we've had some success so far, having secured more than $1.35 billion in partner funds. And this graphic illustrates the many sources of those partnerships, including federal, state, 
and the local funding that flood control is working to secure for Harris County. Each agency has its own definition of eligible projects and its own requirements for local match funding. So the flood control district works diligently to match the projects to the right partnership opportunities. We will now move into the part of the program that is specifically about the Cypress Creek watershed and the Mercer stormwater detention basin. The Cypress Creek watershed is the fifth largest watershed by population in Harris County with 250 miles of open waterways and a 267 square mile drainage area. Cypress Creek is highly developed watershed, but much of the development occurred before regulations around stormwater detention mitigation were in place. A regional drainage study in the Cypress Creek watershed found that flooding along tributaries in Cypress Creek is predominantly caused by water from a rising Cypress Creek backing up into those tributaries, not a lack of of, of sufficient stormwater conveyance or drainage capacity on the tributaries themselves. The study also recommended 26,500 acre feet of additional stormwater detention in the watershed to reduce the backwater issue. Additionally, Cypress Creek is a federally funded, I'm sorry, federally protected natural stream and to widen or deepen Cypress Creek would require an extensive buyout of homes and businesses, which would be costly and disruptive to the community and require stormwater detention as mitigation also. Since the flood control district cannot create one project to meet the 26,500 acre feet of detention recommendation, a watershed-wide approach was adopted to execute multiple flood risk reduction projects in Cypress Creek. The Mercer Stormwater Detention Basin as well as, uh, as the other 22 individual basins that need, need to be built in addition to the Mercer Basin will be initiated, engineered, and designed separately, as well as go through their own separate approvals by Harris County Commissioner's Court at various stages of the project life cycle. The implementation plan breaks the site, the basins out into three tiers based on how they score on criteria that considers flood risk reduction, right-of-way needs, existing conditions, partnership funding, and social vulnerability indexed, among other factors. Based on these criteria, the Mercer Stormwater Detention Basin is a tier one basin, meaning that it receives priority in its engineering and construction. The implementation plan for Cypress Creek was transmitted to Harris County Commissioner's Court on January 25th and a public community engagement meeting regarding the plan was held on March 9th of this year. The implementation plan is currently available online for review, along with a recording and presentation materials from the community engagement meeting. If you would like more information about the Cypress Creek Watershed Implementation Plan, please visit www.hcfcd.org slash ccwip. Let's turn now to the specific project we are discussing tonight. The project area is located in the downstream portion of Cypress Creek, east of the Hardy Toll Road and north of FM 1960. I'm excited to share that this project was recently approved for a nearly $15.4 million grant 
from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development's Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Fund. We will discuss this grant later in the presentation and explain what this means for the project's lifetime. The Flood Control District has identified the needed property for this project and is taking steps to begin the formal acquisition process. Due to the current acquisition process, we will not be able to show specific details of the project layout and benefits. Instead, we will be presenting information about stormwater detention basins in general, the funding partnerships and requirements for this project, and project-specific time constraints. Before we continue, I want to talk about the multiple flood risk reduction tools we have in our toolbox. On this slide, you will see several of our typical tools, but tonight we are focused on the second and last items in the toolbox, which are stormwater detention and floodplain preservation. Because Cypress Creek is a highly developed watershed, we acquire right of way wherever we can along the creek to preserve and or restore natural floodplains for future projects. The Cypress Creek watershed has its own bond ID from the 2018 bond program for right of way acquisition. A stormwater, just a second. I apologize, having I'm having technical difficulties here. Slide 19. Okay, can we go to slide 20, please? Okay, on slide 20, when the flood control district is evaluating a potential site for a flood mitigation project, we often must consider wetlands in the project area. These environmentally sensitive areas are protected under the Clean Water Act, overseen by the United States Army Corps of Engineers, also referred to as USACE. We first try to avoid the wetlands. If that is not possible, we try to minimize and mitigate for any impacts to those wetlands. Obtaining a permit to impact a jurisdictional wetland requires the flood control district to go through lengthy permitting processes. Some of you may be asking, what is a wetland? The United States Environmental Protection Agency, also known as EPA, defines a wetland as an area that is inundated or saturated by surface or groundwater at a frequency and duration sufficient to support vegetation typically adapted for life in saturated soil conditions. Other names for wetlands include swamps, marshes, and bogs. During the current preliminary engineering stage of this project, the Flood Control District is evaluating options in connection with jurisdictional wetlands in the project area. As I mentioned earlier, the Flood Control District was recently awarded $15.4 million from the Community Development Block Grant for Disaster Recovery Program which is under the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. The funding for this grant was in response to 2015, 2016 and Hurricane Harvey rainfall events. The Flood Control District will match this grant with 6.8 million of its own funds from the bond fund pro program. The federal grant is an example of the partnership funding that is crucial to the success of the 2018 bond program, which relies on partnership funding to stretch the $2.5 billion approved by Harris County voters. 
It is important to note that as part of the CDBGDR grant funding, the flood control district is re required to complete construction of the Mercer project by April, 2024. Residents may be aware of other ongoing or planned drainage projects in this area. Along with the undertaking, construction, undertaking of construction of this stormwater detention basin, the flood control district also is preparing a tributary, tributary of Cypress Creek in the Memorial Hills neighborhood. In fall 2021, the flood control district began work along channel K117-00-00 to construct a new reinforced concrete spillway and stilling basin along approximately 400 linear feet of the channel upstream of Old Ranch Road. Construction should wrap up later this summer. Additionally, the Harris County Engineering Department, also known as HCED, has an active local drainage project in the Memorial Hills neighborhood. Coordination with the Flood Control District could allow HCED to tap into the Flood Control District's mitigation infrastructure to maximize benefits and save costs for this project. Some flows from the Memorial Hills neighborhood could be diverted into the Mercer Stormwater Detention Basin until it can be drained into Cypress Creek. For more information on HCED's neighborhood drainage project, please visit www.eng.hctx.net. Now let's take a look at the project life cycle outlook for this project and our next steps. The life cycle of an individual project typically starts with a feasibility study in which a drainage problem is identified along with a type of flood risk reduction project to address the, that problem. The project is developed in more detail during the preliminary engineering stage. During this stage, any environmental clearance must be obtained. We then acquire any needed right of way and work through utility relocations if needed. The final three stages are design, construction, and operation and maintenance. Throughout each project's life cycle, we continue to solicit community input and secure funding opportunities to make these projects a reality. As noted on the slide, we are currently in the preliminary engineering stage of the project life cycle. Preliminary engineering is an important stage in the development of a project in which we conduct a detailed evaluation of different basin alternatives. As we studied this project, we tasked our engineers with creating basin layouts that can be explained, I'm sorry, expanded in the future should more funding become available. The preliminary engineering stage is where the flood control district balances the two parts of its mission, providing flood damage reduction projects that work with appropriate regard for community and natural values. Earlier, I mentioned this project was awarded a $15.4 million CDBGDR grant from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. I briefly touched on the requirements of this funding and how it relates to our project timeline. One of the funding requirements is that the project must be complete, uh, construction of the flight project must be complete by April, 2024. Due to the April 2024 deadline, this project's timeline is being expedited. The preliminary engineering report, which will include the project team's recommended alternative for the stormwater detention basin, will be submitted to Harris County Commissioner's Court later this summer. We will then enter the design stage. 
We will host an additional community engagement meeting during the design stage to share the full boundaries and design details of the basin, as well as incorporate additional public comments. Finally, we will begin construction, which is expected to be complete by April 2024. I will now turn the program back over to Imelda Vera to kick off the Q&A. Thank you, Tawana. Before we move into the Q&A, I want to share a quick reminder that we love to hear from you on this and other projects moving forward across Harris County. To learn more about this project, ask questions, and sign up for our mailing list, please visit hcfcd.org slash Mercer. As a reminder, there are three ways to submit a comment about this project during tonight's session. You can submit a comment on this side in the box near the presentation live stream, submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website at hcfcd.org slash Mercer, or submit a comment via phone at 855-925 2801, utilizing meeting code 9631. If you are joining us via phone tonight, please press star six to leave a message. Additionally, I wanna reiterate that any questions not addressed during tonight's Q&A will receive a response from the Flood Control District following the close of the comment period. Information from this meeting and a recording of the live stream will be available on the Flood Control District's website and YouTube channel. Joining to one for our Q&A session tonight is Imelda Diaz, Director of Engineering with the Flood Control District, and Alvin Jackson with the project team. Uh, now it's time to take some of your questions. Uh, the first question is for Imelda. Imelda, is this project part of the Cypress Creek Watershed Implementation Plan? Uh, yes, uh, the Cypress Creek Watershed Implementation Plan recommended the Mercer Stormwater Detention Basin and other stormwater detention basins. The plan addresses the implementation of uh, project recommendations from the Regional Drainage Plan and Environmental Investigation for major tributaries in the Cypress Creek watershed. The study was completed in 2020 and determined that the main cause of flooding along the Cypress Creek watershed stems from the main channel of Cypress Creek backing up into its tributaries. To alleviate this, the study recommended additional stormwater detention of, along the main stem of Cypress Creek. The Cypress Creek Watershed Implementation Plan uh, takes a watershed-wide watershed approach to executing flood risk reduction projects in the Cypress Creek Watershed. It, it provides a holistic view of activity in the watershed and enables the Flood Control District to deliver projects strategically and efficiently in a heavily developed area. The plan also considers other ongoing or planned projects in the watershed. Great, thank you so much for that very thorough answer. Uh, we have a question coming in for Tuana. Um, Tuana, a resident is concerned that this project will help one part of town while increasing the flooding risk in another part of the county. Can this happen with this project? The Flood Control District is a no adverse impact organization, and this means that the Flood Control District does not create projects that will negatively impact any other community, either downstream or upstream. Thank you. Uh, another question coming in for Imelda. Uh, we have a resident that says they appreciate uh, this progress in the watershed, but they're still concerned about sediment built up in Cypress Creek. Uh, can they see near the Elbridge? Grant and Cypress Wood Bridges. Um, what can you tell about this issue? All I can say at this time is that last fall, the Flood Control District received a FEMA, FEMA grant for our sediment removal program as part of the disaster recovery program. The total grant is about $223 million with about $26 million going to Cypress Creek for sediment removal projects. We also have the major maintenance on Cypress Creek and tributaries project, which uh, is also intended to include desilt and repair work on some sections of Cypress Creek. But the exact sections we have not determined yet. So please just stay tuned for more information on that as this program develops. Thank you for that information. Uh, another question for you, Imelda. Um, we have a resident saying they are concerned about development in this watershed. Uh, why are more homes and structures being built? Um, well, to clarify, the flood control district um, 
I'm sorry. Uh, to to clarify, uh, we we really don't have too much control over what uh, what citizens do on, on private property. Uh, what we what we do have is that we have uh, we have very strict guidelines to make sure that developers are implementing a mitigation into their projects. So um, they're very very strict, and ever since 1983. We have um, been able to implement this and reduce uh, some of the impacts of, uh, of development. Thank you for that information. We have a question for Alvin. Um, Alvin, is this the basin that is being built at the Mercer Botanical Garden? No, the Mercer Botanical Garden is constructing its own detention. This, this detention is independent of that detention. Thank you for that information. Uh, one more question for Tawana. Can you explain the difference between a wet bottom and a dry bottom basin? And will the, Merc uh, will the Mercer Basin have a wet bottom and will it have curvilinear sites to create a more natural appearing feature? Um, another question following up on this is will public access and uses as, I'm sorry, will public access and use as an amenity be taken into consideration early in the design process? Okay. The difference between a wet bottom basin and a dry bottom basin is that a dry bottom basin has a grassy bottom and many times that dry bottom basin can be utilized for other things such as uh, recreational uh, uses when there's no flooding. Uh, so it fills up when there is flooding and then it drains out, but normally it has a dry bottom, grass, dry grassy bottom. On a wet bottom basin, it is excavated below the natural water table of that particular area. So it has a permanent pool of water in it. And then it fills up and then gravity drains out later as the water in the, uh, the bayous and the channels recede. Now concerning uh, public access and uh, amenities, we, the flood control district partners with entities that want to build recreational amenities or other amenities on the basin. So we do not fund those with our uh, money for our projects, but we will partner with entities to uh, build those sometimes. However, please keep in mind that anytime we're building amenities or adding something to the area that would normally be utilized for the stormwater basin, we would be reducing the volume. So we have to balance things out to make sure that our basin serves the, the purpose and the objective that we need for detention, while we're also coordinating with partners and talking with them about what they're interested in building concerning recreational amenities and et cetera. Now, whether this basin would be dry or wet bottom, we'll know more about that during the design phase. Thank you so much for that information. Uh, we have a question for Alvin. Uh, if you have anything to add to the question, oops, I'm sorry. That is not the question that uh, we have coming in. Uh, sorry, a uh, question for Tawana. Why aren't we building this basing on property we already own? Okay, well, it's always been the flood control district's priority in the fast developing Cypress Creek watershed to acquire undeveloped property, both to preserve it from development and to use it for flood risk reduction projects. So without available land, flood risk reduction projects cannot be built. The 2018 bond program allocated more than $100 million for additional floodplain preservation in the watershed, which remains a priority. We have already acquired property and we had already acquired property when we became aware of this particular project. So having had this property already slated for floodplain preservation, when a grant opportunity came up, it was ideal for stormwater detention. Thank you so much for that information. And we are about uh, halfway through our meeting. I wanna share a reminder for anyone that may have joined us later. Um, just a quick uh, reminder on how to submit a comment if you're joining us tonight. Uh, you can submit a comment on this slide in the box near the presentation live stream. You can also submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website at hcfcb.org slash Mercer, or submit a comment via phone at 855-925-1111. 
2801 utilizing meeting code 9631. And of course, if you are joining us via phone tonight, please press star six to leave a message. Um, just a quick reminder, any questions that we are not able to address during tonight's Q&A, we'll receive a response from the Flood Control District following the close of the comment period. Jumping back to uh, some of your questions, a question for Aubin. Uh, what do you mean by floodplain preservation site or property? I'm sorry, Alvin, can you unmute? I apologize, I unmute. The Flood Control District floodplain preservation properties are those acquired by the Flood Control District and held in fee or easement to maintain their natural flow storage benefits and prevent future developments that could contribute to increased flood risk. Thank you for that information. Um, another question for you. What is the estimated capacity of the Mercer Basin? The estimated capacity of the Mercer Basin is 512 acre feet of water. Thank you. A question for Imelda. Uh, what work is happening on tributary K117-00-00? Uh, we are actually constructing a new reinforced concrete spillway and stilling basin along approximately 400 linear I'm sorry, can you repeat that answer one more time, please? I think you were partially muted. The Flood Control District is constructing a new reinforced concrete spillway and stilling basin along approximately 400 linear feet of the channel just upstream of Old Ranch Road. That's going to be uh, completed by the end of this summer. Thank you so much for that information. Uh, we have a question for Tawana. Will this project eliminate flooding altogether in this area? Tawana, can we have you um, start the answer again? Sorry, work, you were partially muted. Okay, no single project can gar guarantee to mitigate all future flooding, but we can say that this project would significantly reduce flooding risk. Given the facts about Harris County's soil and topography, any location in our region can flood given enough rainfall, regardless of any flood risk reduction project. Whether or not an area floods is not solely determined by the total amount of rain, but also by how fast it falls and for how long. We do what we can to reduce the risk of flooding, but we encourage all residents, whether in a mapped floodplain or not, to buy flood insurance and prepare. Although this project will reduce the risk of flooding in the area, the risk of flooding will remain. The Flood Control District recommends that everyone in Harris County and surrounding areas have flood insurance to ensure against the possibility of personal and financial loss. Uh, you, you can visit uh, the website www.hcfcd.org slash M-A-A-P-N-E-X-T to learn more about the Flood Control District's MAP Next initiative, which aims to produce the Harris County's most comprehensive and complete set of flood hazard maps and information. Thank you so much for that information. Uh, I wanna take this time to just thank everyone that has taken the time to join us in this meeting tonight. Uh, we do encourage everyone to uh, use this time and uh, take the opportunity to ask any questions that we may be able to answer for you. Um, again, I'll remind everyone that any questions that we are not able to address through tonight's Q&A, we'll receive a response from the team following the close of the coming period for this project. Uh, but please feel free to utilize our system to go ahead and enter your questions. Uh, Tuana, we have another question coming in for you. 
isn't this track too close to the airport for a wet bottom basin to be considered and won't it attract birds? That's a very good question. And during our design phase, we will conduct a wildlife, ha wild, wildlife hazard review and take that into consideration to determine whether or not this particular area that we're looking at would have to be a dry bottom instead of a wet bottom basin. Thank you for that. Uh, we have a question for Imelda. Can you elaborate more on how the new housing projects in Memorial Hill subdivision area will impact planned flood control district projects in this area? Um, does this mean Memorial Hills is at an increasing flooding risk? I am not aware of a housing project in that area. Uh, like I mentioned before, though, that any development will be required to provide any mitigation to, to offset any of the uh, pervious surface that they will have. Thank you for that information. A question for Alvin. With construction needing to be completed so quickly, when do you anticipate that the sign plans being complete? Yes, with that, with that question, uh, we are anticipating completing the design phase at the end of this year of December or early January of 2023 to get it under construction uh, in timely manner to meet the uh, completion date that's been set by the grant funding. Thank you for that information. Uh, one more question for you. Uh, can this project be expanded in the future and how? Uh, the project engineers have been tasked with creating project alternatives, will be tasked with project alternatives that can be expanded on should future funds become secure. Thank you, Alvin. Uh, question for Tawana, who will be responsible for maintenance of this project after it is built? The flood control district will be responsible for ma maintaining the project after it is built. And also, I would just like to add that one objective of our meeting tonight is also to receive input from you. So whatever your concerns are or whatever your observations are, please feel free to share those with us. And we'll have some more information later towards the end of the meeting about how you can share additional information with us about your particular area, what your observations are and your concerns are related to the project that we're presenting tonight. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'd like to share one more reminder. Uh, if anyone is joining us uh, late tonight, uh, you can submit a comment on this uh, presentation in the site in the box near the presentation live stream. You can submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website at hcfcd.org slash Mercer, or you can submit a comment via phone at 855-925-2801 utilizing meeting code 9631. And if you are joining us via phone tonight, please press star six to leave a message. Uh, do not be discouraged if you feel like we can answer your question. Um, please do continue to submit your comments. Um, if we're not able to address it during tonight's meeting, our team will follow up during the uh, within the period of this project. All right. Uh, so we have a question for Alvin. Uh, what property needs to be acquired for this project? Uh, at this time, that the property that, that probably will be, need to be acquired has not been determined. No, at this time, the flood control district is still acquiring, looking at acquiring property, which is one of the reasons we cannot show any alternatives tonight. The flood control district does not show alternatives on top of property that we do not yet own. We plan to show those alternatives considered in a future community engagement meeting once property acquisitions have been completed. Thank you so much for that information. Um, and with that, I believe uh, we are slowed down on some of your comments. Uh, we do encourage everyone to continue to submit questions even after tonight's presentation. Uh, you can do so again um, all through our website, the project website, which is uh, hcfcd.org forward slash Mercer. Um, and with that, I would like to share one final reminder that we are continuing to accept comments and feedback on this project through July 13. 
We also encourage everyone to get flood insurance as flood season in Harris County runs year round. Thank you again for joining us this evening and for your engagement with this project. We look forward to continuing to share updates as our work moves forward. Stay safe and have a good evening.